I think for coming for today, we have a uh, meeting and we'll talk about rainbow. <laughs> For the introduction, so I will talk about the rainbow paths and rainbow matching. And actually, Gina has presented about this topic uh, twice one in the KMS fall meeting and the other in Jeonju. And she presented about this shortly, so let me uh, explain the details one last time. So as usual, let's start with the definition of rainbow sets. And then today I prepared a more uh, formal definition for Pascal because he was <laughs> not happy with the definition in my pre previous presentation. So we have a ground set X and two positive integers K and M with uh, K less than or equals to M. And then we consider a family of non-empty sets subsets of x, let's say x1 to xm. Then a uh, rainbow set of size k for this family f is a subset of the ground set with the size equals to sorry, size equals to k and we can assign uh, each element of R with distinct powers. Namely there exists an there exists an injection from R to the family F such that an element of R belongs to its image of this injection. Can R be a multi set? Sorry? Can R be a multi set? No, it's just a set. Okay. Yeah. So if the two elements are same, then it's counted one. So we. So for example, we have these four sets, which can be considered as a color set. Then, for example, one to five is a rainbow set of size three. We can color those elements like this. And indeed, we can uh, find the rainbow set of size four because uh, here, either seven or eight can be added the rainbow set with this color from X3. Now let's give uh, some more structure to the rainbow sets. And today's topic is the matches. So now our ground set is an edge set of a graph. And then, um, so we have uh, edge subsets of the graph. And then we want to find a rainbow set, which is also an edge set of the of G, which is a matching. Here, matching is, uh, as usual, is an edge set of pairwise disjoint edges. So rainbow matching is a, a rainbow set, which is a matching. And uh, our main uh, problem is that given a graph class, uh, find the relation between three integers k, l, m, such that every family of k matchings of size l gives a rainbow matching of size m. And our main result is this. 3n minus 3 matchings of size n always give a rainbow matching of size n in any graph. But here is a restriction that n should be bigger than 2. I will, uh, the reason will appear in the last slide. Wait for it. So here are some history of this uh, research in this direction. For bipartite graphs, a Heronian burger proved that 2n minus 1 matchings of size n gives a rainbow matching of size n for any positive integer n. And this actually was uh, proved earlier for uh, matchings in the complete bipartite graph KNN. There, 2n minus 1 matchings of size n uh, always have a rainbow matching of size n. That's proved by Driscoll and Aronian Berger. 
uh, generalized the Driscoll's theorem in this format for any bipartite graph. 2n minus 1 matching cell size n always have a rainbow matching of size n. So here is an example for the tightness of this Aaron-Berwick theorem. Namely, 2n minus 2 matchings are not sufficient. So for example, we consider here, uh, we take a cycle of length 8, then there are two um, two different matching of size 4. One is this uh, take edges alternatively, this red edges, 1, 2, 3, 4. The other is the remaining edges. These are the only uh, matchings of size 4 here. Then we uh, consider three copies of each matching of size 4. So for example, this red matching, we consider is uh, two more copies, this blue matching and this purple matching. And similarly for the, the, the other matching, we consider three copies. This way we have six matchings of size 4. In this example, you cannot find the rainbow matching of size 4. The best possible is 3. This can be generalized for any cycle of uh, even length. So consider a cycle of length 2n, then there are two kinds of matchings of size, size n, then we um, consider n minus 1 copies of each matching. Then we have 2n minus 2 matchings of size n, and there's no rainbow matching of size n. So this was for bipartite graphs. And uh, one important a very famous conjecture related to this Aaron-Berger theorem is that uh, n minus 1 matchings of size n always have a rainbow matching of size n minus 1 in bipartite graphs. This is somehow related to the uh, conjecture by Reiser, Graldi, Steiner, and that's as a, or any n by n Latin sphere. There's a partial transversal of size n minus 1. And this is somehow related to uh, that conjecture. This is indeed a stronger version of the conjecture. And this is also, if true, it can imply this theorem. So, for example, so we want to have this 2n minus 1, comma n implies in bipartite graphs n. And so assume n minus 1 comma n to n is true. Oh, sorry. Now, suppose we have 2n minus 1 matching. So here is my ground graph, which is bipartite. And I have matchings. Say so this is one of the matchings. So each of for each of the matching, so we draw a copy of the graph B and draw the copy of the same matching here. Now this collect all these yellow edges, then it will give us a matching of size. 2n. So this is size n, and here also has size n. So now we make, we modify this uh, family to 2n minus 1 matching of size 2n. And by the assumption, we will have a rainbow matching of size 2n minus 1. But the one of these two parts should contain a matching of size n. That will give us a rainbow matching of size n. So this way, this conjecture is stronger both uh, than both the uh, conjecture by Reiser and the, the theorem by Aaron and Berger. Now let's talk about uh, general case. In general graphs, Aaron 
Berger, Chudnowski, Howard, and Seymour showed that 3m minus 2 matching subsize n can give a rainbow matching of size n. But this 3m minus 2 doesn't seem to be tight. And actually, the conjecture here is that uh, in general, 2n matchings suffices. And when n is odd, 2n minus 1 suffices. And if this, is, this conjecture is true, then these numbers should be tight. I'll, uh, for the second one, just consider the previous example on the cycle of length 2k. And for this first one, I will show the example, the example on the next slide. Before that, uh, let me just mention a bit more general conjecture of the Darwin Berger. So the, in the previous slide, the conjecture was n minus 1 matching of size n in bipartite graphs as a rainbow matching of size n minus 1. Here's a little difference. Uh, now we consider all graphs. And here, the size becomes uh, one larger than this. And uh, by the same logic as here, if this conjecture is true, then it will imply this first one. We start from the true n matching of size n. We duplicate each to have two n matchings of size 2n. That will give us a rainbow matching of size 2n minus 1, and take a half. And as I promised, here is an example for the, the tightness of the first conjecture. So now think of a cycle of length 4k. Then we we have this forget about this dash and dash. Then this example seems exactly the same as the one I showed you before. And here, so we have we will have two uh, n minus two matching of size n that does not give a rainbow matching of size n. And now we add one more matching of size n uh, that does not use any edge from the cycle. For example, this this is dashed edge. Then, without this dashed edge, we have no rainbow matching of size n minus one. That means if we want to find the rainbow matching of size n here. Then we should use uh, exactly one of these dashed edges. But if we pick one, then we cannot use four kinds of edges: this, 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 and this. But in the remaining edges, there are here four edges, and in general, there are four k minus four edges. There we can the, the best we can do is uh, a rainbow matching of size two k minus two. And then put this edge again, it will give us 2k minus 1, where the n was 2k. So this shows the, um, if this conjecture, this first conjecture is true, then this is tight. So now let me define the, some alternating paths and cycles when we are given a matching. So I didn't write down the definition because it's a little uncomfortable to write down. So let me just explain it with a bunch of figures. Suppose we are given a matching, say, M. Then an alternating path is a path with whose edge appears alternatingly not in M and in M. For example, this is an alternating path. This red, not in M, in M, not in M, in M. This is alternating. Or uh, more precisely, M alternating. And uh, let's see other example. This is also M alternating. Although it ends up with this red edge, it's still alternating. So like this, if two endpoints of this alternating path it's not uh, the, the end point of an edge of this uh, matching, and we call it augmenting M alternating path, or simply denote by M A A P. Let's see more examples. This is uh, M alternating path. 
but this is not augmenting because it's ending with a vertex uh, which is an end point of um, this edge from the matching. And this is uh, augmenting M also. Everything is clear. And now let's define an old alternating, old M alternating cycle. So this is just uh, we identify two endpoints from the augmenting M alternating path. So it's alternating except uh, at one part, one they call it at one vertex. Except in here, the all edges are alternating. So this is M alternating old cycle. And as the title is the rainbow matchings and rainbow, rainbow paths, now we need to define rainbow paths. But here, by rainbow, we mean as a little different from the rainbow set before. So suppose we are given a matching M and consider a family of augmenting M alternating paths. Then an um, augmenting M alternating path is said to be P rainbow if after deleting edges from the matching, the remaining edges are forming a rainbow set for the family P. Let's see the example. So here, so we, these black edges are um, edges of M. And here we have four uh, augmenting M alternating paths. For example, this, this red, black augmenting alternating path is red, black, red, black, red. This is the uh, augmenting M alternating path. And uh, for example, this blue is uh, the other way, blue, black, blue, black, blue. This is also an M alternating augmenting path. But this family indeed has no rain, no P rainbow augmenting M alternating path. But if we add one more uh, path like this, then here we can find the rain, find P rainbow augmenting M alternating path, for example, like this. So this is uh, augmenting alternating path, and after removing these black edges, which, is from, which are from the matching, then the remaining three edges are rainbows. So this is the rainbow augmenting M alternating path. Now, why we are looking at this uh, rainbow path is because of the, uh, because we can um, derive the results for this rainbow matchings from uh, some results from of the rainbow path, rainbow augmenting and alternating path. And the connection uh, can be shown by this proposition. Suppose we have a matching of size n minus 1 and consider a family of k plus n minus 1 matching of size n. And we assume two more things. The first, um, every family of k augmenting m alternating paths from the, the imagine there's a ground graph. And from the ground graph, if we take a, a k augmenting m alternating paths, then they always gave a rainbow, p rainbow augmenting m alternating path. And also assume that this matching M is actually a rainbow matching of size N minus 1 for the family M. Then we can extend the rainbow, the size of the rainbow matching by 1. So there is a rainbow matching of size N for the family M. And here is the reason. Okay, so P is a set of paths, right? So yes. P rainbow means that you take one from. Yeah, it's a it's a rainbow set after deleting edges from M. It's a rainbow set for P. Uh -huh. So 
rainbow has was beside the emperor's one. So if we, um, no, it doesn't have to be. So, for example, if this is our matching, and suppose the, the rainbow, she rainbow augmenting M alternating that can look like this. But what this means is, um, I will explain, but later on we will replace this edge with these two edges from the rainbow augmenting automating path. And together with these four edges, now we have a matching upside case. So let me explain it more precisely. So we start from k plus n minus 1 matching substance n. And because of the second assumption, we first uh, take m as a rainbow matching of size n minus 1 for the sandwich. Now we have k remaining colors that are re not represented by this matching m. And each of those k matchings take the union with m. Then, as we, written in this first observation, m union n, because the matching of size n is, has a size larger than the matching of size m, M union N contains the uh, augmenting M alternating path. And now, in that way, we can obtain K augmenting M alternating path. And by the first assumption, we can find the rainbow augmenting M alternating path. And then, as I explained here, so we have a rainbow um, augmenting M alternating path take the symmetric difference with the uh, original matching M, then it will increase the size of ma rainbow matching by one. Like here. Or let me do one more. So the rainbow augmenting M alternating path can look like this. These three are already colored with the, the initial M minus one colors. And these three colors are from the remaining three colors. So these six edges are forming a rainbow matching, which is larger than the size of M. So this is a connection to the rainbow matchings. So this idea is actually used for the proof of all the previous, uh, previous, previously known results. For Aroni Burger theorem, actually, there are lots of uh, different proofs, but uh, one proof really uses this kind of uh, idea. So, we first prove a lemma that in a bipartite graph, consider we have a matching of size n minus 1, then every family of n augmenting m alternating path has a rainbow, key rainbow augmenting m alternating path. Then by the proposition, this will immediately imply this theorem. And uh, I want to talk, say something at the end, but I'm not sure if I have enough time. But let me just mention some equivalent formulation of this lemma in terms of directed path. So. Suppose we have three sets S and V and uh, T, where the size of V equals n minus one, and consider so n um, directed path, directed ST path. And by ST path, I mean a directed path connecting a vertex from S and vertex from T through the vertices in V. So this S set is a set of sources, and T is a set of uh, things. If we have an N directed ST path, then 
there is a rainbow as the path. Rainbow means uh, we can use the different color of the edges that connect uh, a vertex in S and a vertex in T. Uh, by using this bipartite mass, we can uh, somehow we can we contract uh, so look at this lemma. From here, we contract this the edges of matching M, and then somehow we can uh, determine the orientation of the edges. And that way we can uh, we can um, show this lemma. Sorry, this lemma implies this. And actually, in bipartite graphs, we can do it the other way. So from a directed graph, we can obtain a bipartite graph by uh, splitting the vertex to thin cancels. So these two things are actually uh, equivalent, and what Ron prefers is this formulation. And the proof is uh, not very not difficult to do it at home as an exercise. So I think we'll assume that the graphs are equal, the local edges. Um. Yeah, but I think you can just. In this kind of problems, it's almost equivalent. If there is an edge that is contained in several colors, then you can just consider it as a multi edge, multi parallel edge. So, the second lemma in the directed problem, those edges will just may correspond to a loop. So, I was wondering about that. Um, don't let me think. But here, we are using the edges not in the matching, so I think uh, there will be no loop. So in general growth, similarly, this was uh, proved after showing that uh, in general graph, if you have a uh, matching of size n minus 1 and 2 n minus 1, Augmenting M alternating paths, then we have a rain T rainbow augmenting M alternating paths. And this, the proof of this was quite uh, uh, complicated using the, some argument for Blossom Forbix. And this, uh, why their proof could not improve this 3n minus 2 is because this 2n minus 1 in this theorem is kind by this example. So here, uh, the, the m has m is the matching of size two, and we have four uh, augmenting m alternating paths, but there is no rainbow augmenting m alternating paths. And uh, if we make this size longer, then we can find uh, uh, such an example for any m. But uh, the purpose of our research is that maybe we can improve, slightly improve this number if we observe how these uh, uh, critical examples look like. So namely, we posed uh, a question that if we can characterize all cases where 2n minus 2 is not sufficient in this theorem. And uh, we succeeded, and we called those uh, system of alternating paths by batches. So I finished the first half of the introduction. <laughs> now, the second half is not long, but I think it's, the definitions are quite complicated, so I spent much time to prepare the figures. So let me, uh, to define batches, I first need to define origami trees. So an M origami tree is a graph on 2M plus 2 vertices, where X and Y are the end points, and the other vertices are, let's call it the interior vertices. And the edge set consists of three matches. One uh, matching of size M connecting UI and VI, 
and uh, the other connecting x u1 and v1 u2 v2 u3 and so on and v with the opposite way x v1 and uh, u1 v2 and so on so this is why i told you it's complete for this i'll just call this i write down this definition so let's see the figure so for example this is an one origami strip so we first have a MOS of size 1 connecting U1 and V1 and AOS is this red axis X connect X and U1 and connect V1 and Y and the blue edge is the opposite way X V1 and U1 Y so let's see the longer example when M equals 3 so we first have a matching of size 3 u1, v1, u2, v2, u3, v3 and then there are two uh, matchings of size 4 one in red color and one in blue color like this and you'll see that there are two kinds of uh, augmenting M alternating paths one is this red, black, red, black augmenting alternating path and the other is blue, black, blue, black augmenting alternating path so that's what I wrote here. So A union M gives us an uh, augmenting M alternating path, and B union M gives us an another augmenting M alternating path. And now we are ready to define matrices. So matrices is a collection of a family of uh, augmenting M alternating paths, whatever M is, and it's uh, obtained in the following way. We start from a multigraph H and uh, an integer reading on the, the edge set. And then for each edge of this multigraph H, we replace the edge with an origami strip of size the, uh, W of XY. And here, uh, all origami strips have this joint interior vertex set. And the K batch is then the collection of all paths of this PA and PB for each origami strip and each repeated uh, this many times. Weight of the edge many times. So this is also complicated. So let's see this example. We have a multigraph H look like this. And we have a weighting for E1, it has a weight 3, E2 has 2, and E3 has 1, and E4 has 2. Then, for example, we replace E1 with a origami, uh, 3 origami strip, because WE1 is 3. So it looks like this, and for E2, we replace it with 2 origami strip, and so on. And this is just the ground graph, ground graph of the batch. We consider three copies of this navy black alternating augmenting path. And uh, for example, two copies of this green black augmenting alternating path. So we collect the, so in this case we have three, three, oh, it's on the next slide. So the batch, um, if, if we call it this black edges as M, then the batch is a family of 2 times the size of M augmenting M alternating path. And uh, here you can observe that there is no rainbow uh, augmenting M alternating path. But if we add any new color that is not an edge in the matching M, then this will have a rainbow augmenting augmenting rainbow augmenting M alternating path. So this this third observation is not obvious, uh, but it's not difficult and this will be the used at the end of the proof. Uh, can you remind me the 
definition of this basis. So v is a family of two m. Yeah. So we con construct this uh, ground graph. And then for each of each, so it consists of a uh, union of origami strips. And each of the origami strips, so as I told you, an origami strip has two kinds of augmenting alternating paths. And we consider um, the copies of each alternating augmenting path. But how many? It's the uh, same as the size of the matching of that origami strip. That is black edge matching. So, for instance, for those green ones, for E2, you have. Uh, yeah, two copies of each. So, this light so green, black. Uh, four, four. Yeah, we, here we have four. Uh -huh. And here we will have six. Here we have two. Here we have four. And E is a set of those augmenting pairs. Yes. Uh -huh. So, in total, is the number of paths is exactly the same as two times this uh, number of black edges. So here is our main theorem again. 3a minus 3 matching of size n always gives a variable matching of size n when n is at least 3. And this can be proved by this theorem that uh, from this Aharoniados theorem, 2k, yeah, if we have a matching of size k, then 2k plus 1 uh, augmenting m alternating path are sufficient to have a rainbow augmenting m alternating path. But the tightness, the, the critical example where uh, we have 2k augmenting alternating paths with no rainbow augmenting alternating paths are precisely the k batches. Where this a k batch is a batch where the number of black edges is k or the weight sum is k. Okay. So um, we will show this second part because the first part will follow from this third observation. So once we can prove this second part of theorem 2, then this one can follow because if we have 2k plus 1 families, then removing one, then the uh, remaining 2k colors, if there is no rainbow augmenting and alternating path, then it should look like a batch then add back the removed color, then it, this uh, ob third observation shows there should be a rainbow and augmenting in the So we will, I will explain the proof of this uh, second part of theorem 2. So there are three main steps. So we will prove by induction on K so what we want to show is 2k m a a piece uh, with no rainbow m a a p forms a, a k batch. And uh, also 2k plus 1 m a a piece always have a rainbow m a a p. This is what we will show, and uh, we prove by induction on k. The basic case will be k equals zero, then it will be true. And suppose uh, we have 2k augmenting m alternating paths, and suppose there is no rainbow augmenting m alternating paths. In the uh, first of all, we can show that there exists an old rainbow alternating cycle. 
So first, if there is a rainbow triangle, I mean, rainbow M alternating triangle, then we are done. So suppose there's no such thing, then uh, so in this situation, if there is a vertex uh, um, vertex not contained in the union of the edges of the matching M, if uh, there is a, a path containing this edge VA, let's say P1, then there should be no other color uh, containing the edge VB, right? Because uh, there is no rainbow triangle, rainbow alternating triangle. Then for each path uh, other than T1, if it's irrelevant from V, A, B, no, sorry, it's irrelevant from A and B, then we just put T, I prime equals P, I. Otherwise, if it look like this, first follow this path P and then reach A and use this A, B edge and keep go to the other end point. For each of these uh, uh, alternating augmenting path of this type, we re replace it with this uh, subpath starting from B to this, this end point. So this way we modify the family of paths and um, so remove the color, this red color, then we will have now 2k minus 1, m minus a, b, a, a, p. And this has size k minus 1. So by the induction hypothesis of this argument, this statement, we can find uh, rainbow augmenting alternating path like this. So here we are considering B as a vertex not in the matching after, after removing all of these things. So when you replace uh, two paths to one, right? Uh, uh, or maybe you, you may have to argue that P and Q do not intersect? No, sorry. This is one uh, P, A, B, Q forms uh, one augmenting and alternating path. They are all from the same path. Oh, For okay. that path, we consider, I mean, we delete all other things on the right side and remain this part. Okay. Okay. And this way we will have, uh, we will we reduce the size of the matching by one. We will delete uh, edge A, B. So we reduce the size of matching by one and we will lose this one path, P1. So we will uh, disregard this red path. Then we have 2k minus 1 path. And we can find the rainbow matching, rainbow uh, augmenting m alternating path. But if it's uh, from some other vertex and which is b or v, then we can either, if it stops at v, then it's uh, already a rainbow augmenting m alternating path. And if it reaches B, then we extend it using this AB and AV. So then there is a rainbow augmenting M alternating path, which is a prediction to the, there is no rainbow in AP. So the, the only remaining situation is that that rainbow path starts from V and ends up with B. In this case, because this augmenting alternating path has uh, both length, we add these two edges that will give us a rainbow uh, alternating both side path. Right? And the second step, we show that uh, this should not be a, a cycle of length bigger than three. The, the on, only the triangles are on uh, rainbow odd cycle, rainbow alternating odd cycle. Because suppose there is a large 
uh, rainbow alternating old cycle, then we will contract this cycle and modify the path by if it's touching this old cycle, then we remove this one part. This way, uh, because the worst case will be this uh, thick pie, then we have um, the size of matching so the number of paths and the number of matchings, the size of matching M. The size of matching M is decreased by M minus 2, and the number of paths we will disregard these three colors in this k5. So we have uh, so this is k minus 2, this will be 2k minus 3. So there should now this is bigger than 2 times 2, 2 times k minus 2. So there should be a rainbow um, augmenting m, alter, m prime alternating path in this modified uh, family. But it ends up with, uh, I mean, if it, if it ends up with some irrelevant vertex, then we are done. So it should reach to this site, this contracted vertex. But uh, look at the end point. If this uh, rainbow path ends up with this vertex, then we use this uh, M edge and the non M edge. This way, we can extend this to a rainbow alternating augmenting path of length bigger to uh, two bigger. And if we, if this path ends up with this vertex, then we go the, the other way. And if it ends up with this vertex, then we are done because this is a vertex not in any of the edge in the metric. So this way, we can extend it to. Uh, rainbow match, rainbow alternating augmenting path in the original system. So this means there should not be a old cycle of length bigger than three. And here, the reason why triangle is uh, allowed is because if it was a triangle, then we will lose two colors, so red and black, so red and blue, and we will lose one edge from the matching. But still, the ratio is 2. So it does not uh, um, satisfy this con condition. So that's why triangles are dangerous. But uh, by step 3, so for triangles, we also do the similar thing. We construct this and uh, look at the, how the other things look like. But by the same logic, so, uh, by the same logic, if there is a rainbow augmenting alternating path in the, after contracting a triangle and removing two colors, then we can extend it to uh, augmenting a rainbow path in the original system. So we can assume after contracting a triangle, this also has no rainbow augmenting alternating path. Then, by the induction hypothesis for this first uh, statement, it should be a k minus one batch. And we will recover this original configuration from k minus one batch and show that the all, all possibilities are k batches. In this step, maybe it's not unicorn at all, but everything is uh, in the class of k batches. So let me show, because it's a bit complicated in, to say in general things, so let's do the most simplest, I mean, the, let's try the simplest case, where k equals 2. Simplest and non-trivial. So when k equals 2, we will have a one batch, but the, the, the only one batch is this shape. If you can not understand, it's a graph look like this diagram. But this triangle is contracted, and we don't know where this green and this violet edges uh, reach. 
let's um, from here is a kind of case study. Suppose this green edge is incident to incident to this vertex, then it should end up with uh, like this. That's obvious. But then um, replace this uh, the role of this blue edge with this green edge. Then because of we know the configuration of this violet edge, so um, and we know after uh, contracting this uh, green, red, black triangle, it's also a k minus one batch. So it should actually look exactly the same. The green should look like this, and then replacing the role of green and blue, then the blue also should look like this, just exactly the same as the green. Now we look at this uh, where this violet edge should go. If it's connected here, then uh, it should end up with this edge. Then we can find a rainbow uh, augmenting alternating path like this. So it should not connect it to there. So uh, let's assume it connected to here. Then by the same logic as for this green and blue, this violet and the red should be the same. So it completes an origami trick. Otherwise, if this is connected to directly connected to there, then what happens here is there is an old cycle of length five. So this is forbidden. So this way, if the at the beginning, if the green is connected to there, if green is connected to there, then it uniquely determines this origami string. Like this. So, and the other possibility is the green from this original configuration, the green is connected to this vertex. Then, um, if the violet edge is connected to either this or this, then we can proceed the same argument as before. Then this is a contradiction. So violet also should be connected to there. Then there are two possibilities. Either the end point of this red, blue, origami strip is uh, the other vertex, or these two origami strips share two end points. So this is the simplest case and for in general case, it's a bit more complicated, but it's not very different from here. The thing is, uh, as in here, if we know this configuration, if, and if green reaches to here, then it determines that th this edge should be contained in the unique origami tree. And uh, it determines the shape of the origami, that origami tree. That's the point. So this is uh, how to prove that theorem two of our main results. And from here, uh, we can prove the this theorem one that says three n minus three matching subsize n always gives us a rainbow matching of size n when n is at least three. It's because we, as before, we start from 3n minus 3 matchings, and by induction, we can find the rainbow matching of size n minus 1. And then we, uh, as before, we, uh, we, we obtain the rainbow m augment, sorry, augmenting m alternating paths with the remaining colors. And there are 2k minus, 2n minus 2 paths. And if there is a rainbow augmenting alternating path, then we are done. Otherwise, they are forming a batch. Uh, here, I didn't write it, but it should be an n minus 1 batch. And um, so, yeah. So,
if we are I didn't write anything. So for example if we are in this situation and uh, each of them are multiplied twice. Look at the colors used to this uh, edges of n. They are also uh, matching of size n. So they have some edge that is not contained in this matching n. Right? So we find the rainbow uh, augmenting alternating path with that edge, but uh, it's a a bit more complicated because even if we find, for example, here, um, so even if we find the rainbow augmenting alternating path, if it's uh, uh, if it's disjoint from this edge but uses um, but uses this red yellow edge from other side. Then what our goal was these two edges and these three edges are forming a rainbow matching of size n, but we are using the same edge twice. So here there are some technical parts that to uh, manage this situation. But our so this idea fails in this graph because. We have this situation, and as I said, this yellow edge also have uh, another edge outside, right? If it uh, look like this or this or this, then we can find the rainbow matching of size n. But the problem here is this. Then this K4, there is no rainbow matching of size 2. This doesn't happen here because um, because this, if this yellow edge connects like this, then we can use this yellow edge and this red blue. So the only problematic case is this K4, and that's why our theorem works for n at least three. Okay, that's a uh, Page of the proof for the theorem one. So let me. So there's not enough time, so let me just uh, finish discussion with reminding you two conjectures. The first one is uh, the conjecture for this kind of rainbow matching problem is two n for every positive integer n, and when n is odd, it's two n minus one, so the same as the Feynman system, and uh, Another conjecture related to this nothing squares is n matching of size n gives a rainbow matching of size n minus one. And let me just mention one thing that uh, maybe this conjecture is uh, hard to prove, but what I'm thinking is what if we take uh, some some other graph, some smaller graph classes like triangle free graphs, because these batches have a bunch of triangles. I mean, even if it consists of one organic strip, that's two triangles. So maybe somehow we can reduce the coefficient uh, here, uh, something smaller than three. Maybe we can prove uh, here in like a uh, five over two and matching sub size n and this rainbow matching of size n, something like that. Okay, that's. The end of my presentation, and thank you for listening. Is there any known result for another graph class? Another graph class? I don't know. Um, let me think. I don't know only the bipartite case and this general graph case are known. The one thing is that that uh, presentation in the last, 
I mean, his presentation in this case at seminar was about also related to this kind of thing. I say it uses some probabilistic method and it assumes the multiplicity. I mean, the, an edge can be used constantly many times, or something like that. And there's the other theorem. And I forgot to mention it. But this 2n minus 1 matching subsets n in bisected graphs and 3n minus 2 matching in uh, any graphs. Those results are also reproved by Sun Moon. I think he presented here last year using this discrete mode theory. That's a topological approach to for this problem. But this uh, that method could not prove this 3 minus 3 case because of the well yeah, because of this pessimistic exam, the battery. So the whole school is algorithmic, right? So it's inspired by the uh, blossom shrinking lemma of Edmonds, right? Yeah. So I was wondering whether like some of the matching theory can be generalized to the rainbow mappings. Like for instance, weight inversions. So if I give weight on edges and uh, um, try to find a rainbow matching of maximum weight, or um, what I know is uh, there's a fractional matching version of this theory. There we have a two n edge sets with uh, the sum of the weights. Hold on. What is the fractional matching? For every uh, yeah. vertex, it's the weight yeah. sum of the edges is at most one. So the, that's it. we have two n edge set with the um, weight sum at least n. Then there is a rainbow edge set with the weight sum at least n. And the yeah. proof uses this uh, topological color theory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this two n actually uh, holds for fractional matching. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, maybe um, there are some results for hypergraph. I think it's a very recent. Result maybe in last December or not last November that Ahroni and Chadnovsky and some other people showed for a three uniform hypergraph. Mm -hmm. I mean, not like this, but uh, something like n matching of size n gives a rainbow matching of size two thirds n, something like that. So people started to look uh, for the, the hypergraphs.